Just okay, so you're ready to roll, roll. Um, or is this Yeah, many know what we're doing. Yeah, okay. Um, the way we structured it is slightly different. We've taken on three roles. Um, Imran's the role of uh, one of the creators of Finometrica. Job's taken on the role of a uh, risk officer from the FSA, and I'm from the firm. The presentation is going to be done on behalf of the firm. We've done two interviews with the uh, FSA and uh, Finometrica, which are going to be played. That's why uh, we've arranged out like this. Okay. So. Um, we're never ready to start. Okay, when you're ready, you're up. Let's go. Right. Welcome today. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at Finometrica and risk profiling. This is something that we've been looking to implement in our firm for a while. Uh, we're just going to go through some things we've discovered about risk profiling and uh, how we've used Finometrica and what we want to do in the future with it. Um, presentation is going to start with uh, an introduction to a client. We were, we've used fictitious clients for this scenario in order to um, give a background and show some direction of where we are going with this uh, with Cinemetrica. Once we've introduced the clients, we're going to look at types of risk and risk analysis. Also going to look at the guidelines suggested by the FSA and their views on risk and how it should be um, assessed before dealing with the client. Um, we looked at a range of tools, but the main one we're going to focus on today is Finometrica. Finometrica is a tool for risk profiling. We're going to go through it Actually, we've had practical experience. We're going to have an interview with one of the creators of Finometrica and just suggest how we can utilise that. Um, then we're going to run our clients, our fictitious clients, through Finometrica, show you the results we've discovered from Finometrica and how we implemented those results and how we would use Finometrica. And summing up conclusion wise, we're going to look at um, how Finometrica has aided us in um, coming up with the risk profile and the overall portfolio for our clients. Now, a brief introduction of our clients. Two clients, a married couple, Richard, who's 33, on £85,000 a year, and a solicitor, and Amelia, who's 26, on a salary of £22,000, and she's a secretary. Now, Amelia is actually pregnant and expecting twins, um, so she's anticipating being off work for two years, so we need to factor that into the objectives. Um, the objectives that we got, not all of them are short term objectives, some of these are quite long term, as you can see by the school fees, but the main ones are they want to save £350,000. Once they've saved £350,000, they want to then purchase a house. Um, they also need to save for private school fees. They want to send their twins through education, through a private education. And we found out that the actual cost for that is £222,458 per child. So we've got a big investment goal for them, but we have 21 years to achieve it. Um, they also want to retire on funds that are equal to two-thirds of their current income. The current income combined is £107,000, so approximately two-thirds of that would be £72,000. Now, they do have a pension plan already in place, and we're not going to be um, moving around with that too much at this stage. That's something we would look to do in the few, near future, um, because mainly because Richard is looking to inherit £450,000 when his father decides to ultimately die and give him his wealth. So we need to give him some inheritance tax advice. Is his father going to be very accommodating in that regard? <laughs> well, he's seriously also oh, right, 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 okay, right. Right. Um, They also have very limited understanding of risk, and we're hoping to utilise tools to explain this to them and how they, um, how they should be looking at their risk. Um, so the next two years, we need 44000 to cover to the, the two years of Amelia's salary. So that will be incorporated into our investments. Now, as well as this, they actually do already have substantial savings. They have overall just over £150,000. We were going to leave £50,000 and when we were creating their portfolio, we were going to look to use about £100,000 of that in our initial investments. So those were our clients. Before we went ahead and sat down with the interview with the clients and did some background research, we needed to uh, find out um, views on risk. We wanted to do what the clients' attitudes to risk were. But to do that, we wanted to know what the guidelines were. So what I did, I managed to get an interview with the Chief Risk Officer at the FSA. I'm just going to play that video with you now, and then we're going to go through what the FSA have suggested. Hi, I'm here with um, Job Ituer, Chief Risk Officer at the FSA. Um, just got a few questions for you, Job, today. hope you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. Fine. There's a lot of issues going around about risk profiling or risk awareness. Just want to ask some views on them. Um, what are the FSA requirements in terms of risk profiling and what has led you to these requirements? Yeah, the FSA has actually looked at uh, how the financial services industry 
has been profiling risk in the past and uh, they found that there's been a, a lot of problems with it. And so in uh, January 2011, a new Ganges consultation document was issued uh, uh, looking into this and to be able to offer some suggestions and solutions uh, for the financial services industry to be able so that they can actually properly assess the, the risk of declines. Does this then mean that the risk profiling methods that were being undertaken by firms prior to January 2011 were actually insufficient? Yes, and that's actually because many of the questionnaires are, are, are actually poorly structured and they rely on poor questions, poor scoring and poor interpretation. And this has led to failure to take into account the client's capacity for loss. And there also there's also be failure to identify customers who are unwilling to accept any risk of capital. When firms are determining the risk profile of a client, do you think they are placing too much emphasis or an over-reliance on risk profiling tools and asset allocation tools? Yes. And what, what is actually happening is they've been failure to actually identify the limitations of law in the system. And if they, if they are able to actually identify these limitations, they'll be able to put in place mitigating factors to be able to uh, help them in serving the customer better. And this would actually help in the engaging in the process of know your customer process, know your customer process in order to fulfill the treat your customer value policy. Once firms have created a risk profile for their client, they usually put this client with other clients into risk categories. Do you see a problem with the way that they are putting clients together in these categories? Yes, there's been a problem with that because the clients have been lumped together in categories. Uh, people that shouldn't be together in one category are being put together in the same category. And what's actually happened is uh, there's been, uh, this has led to the description that are not fit for purpose. And uh, things are over, they're overduly vague and they did not effectively uh, explain the various levels of risk. We've actually heard of firms having predefined portfolios that they then use to match their clients to from the risk categorize, categories that they have used. Doesn't this actually lead to problems when creating portfolios for clients because clients will have been miscategorized? Yes, the common problem of categorization has actually uh, led to clients not properly or, or investments not being matched clients not being matched properly to the right investment and uh, because of uh, poor assessment criteria of, of, uh, of profiling there's been failure to actually take into account clients objectives and their various situations in terms of this. for example their financial situations are not taken into account uh, most of the time From my experience, I've witnessed a large proportion of advisors take risks for the client if the client shows that they are willing to do so. I don't believe that this is the best approach. How do you feel about this? Yes, because there's been too much emphasis actually on uh, the client's willingness to, to, to take risk. But really, all that should actually be put into consideration. For example, client's objectives, what they want to achieve. And also, uh, nothing that should be looked at is the client's capacity to actually absorb losses. As a firm, we're looking at different tools um, and pro software programs that we could utilize to aid us in our assessment of a client's risk profile. What advice would you give to other firms looking to utilize these? The first thing is actually to make sure that, that this software is actually designed properly to meet the needs of the clients. And another thing is also to, to assess the software, analyze the limitations, and uh, so that you can actually put in place mitigating factors to mitigate against these limitations. And that you should also do is that uh, you should also make sure there are proper guidance there in place uh, to, in order to be able to, uh, to use the software properly in order to achieve uh, the aims and objectives of these clients. Thank you very much for your time today, Joe. Best of luck in the future. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, that was a brief interview that we were um, lucky enough to be able to do with one of the um, officers at the FSA. And brief summary of the views from that we've discovered is, is can be seen here. So it's, the main things to look at is the assessing the customer's capacity for loss absorption and their risk tolerance. Identifying customers that are best suited they're placing their money in cash deposits. So those customers that aren't able to take risk or cannot afford to take risk, their money should be looking at minimum risk minimal risk investments. 
and also to, for the firm's perspective, they need to have a robust and flexible process in place to, in order to ensure that they are taking the best interest of the customer into consideration when creating these investment portfolios for their clients. We also need to get the clients to be engaged in suitability assessment processes um, to ensure they understand the nature and risk of the products that they're investing. Obviously with the RDR enforced there was an issue in the past where advisors were ignoring factors, just letting their clients know what they wanted to let their clients know for their own interest. With the RDR now should eradicate this um, uh, lack of transparency and hopefully we can utilise that in our future, make sure that we are letting the clients know exactly what's going on, what's happening with their money in order for the clients to make an informed decision. Now from that, we, there's two main risk types, risks for client risk and investment risk. Client risk is directly related to the client, investment risk is, um, can be related from the market and that investment risk mainly affects the firm. Uh, client risk can be taken from their willingness and capacity to absorb losses and also their risk tolerance, but client, we found that client risk can be affected by a variety of behavioural factors, so factors such as biases to things like the prospect theory which we'll be going through later on and how uh, individuals' perspectives change over time. Now, in terms of investment risk, these factors are usually impacted by the market, so any natural disasters or economic issues, political issues, would impact immensely on the risk of that investment and they need to be considered as well. Some firms actually don't differentiate between these and they don't actually know the difference between absorption of losses or risk tolerance. We believe that it's important for us as a firm to be able to relay this across to our clients. Um, so what we're gonna, how we tend to do that is through a process called risk profiling, which is basically an investment into the client's risk attitude. We're going to look at um, using Philometrica to do this and um, utilise this risk profile in creating optimal portfolios for our clients. Now, this will also help us show that we are adhering to the guidelines presented to us by the FSA. Uh, when we do look at risk profiling, we need to make sure that we're um, taking life cycle and time horizon into consideration. There are, there's a lot of research out there suggesting that an in individual's risk profile can change, but also a lot of risk, uh, research suggesting that risk profile doesn't change. From the research we've done, we found that the attitude towards risk is dependent on the individual's position in their current life cycle. So a single individual would have a different risk appetite to a married individual. A married individual would have a different risk appetite to an individual with children. So these need to be taken into consideration and it needs to be understood that individual's life cycle position does change. So these risk profiles need to be done regularly and that is what some tools don't actually suggest this. Some tools suggest that risk profiles don't change. We also found that wealth, gender and income um, can place a big difference on an individual's risk appetite. So wealth, an individual that has a great deal of wealth will be more prone to or more happy with taking risk than an individual that has a low degree of wealth. Similarly, different genders and also those with higher incomes are more uh, open to taking risks. Now, what we're going to do now is going to play a brief interview with Mike Chavon, one of the creators of Philometrica. Philometrica is a risk profiling tool. It's psychometric in nature. It's um, 25 questions. From these 25 questions, it places um, the client into a category, one of the, which is one of the seven categories. And then from those seven categories, you can um, link it through to optimal portfolios. So what we're going to do is going to play this interview, and after this interview, we're going to run our client through Philometrica and show you the results of that. I've been lucky enough today to be able to have a sit down with Imran Hamid, one of the creators of Finometrica, a risk profiling tool that we are actually going to be considering to implement. Imran, thank you for your time today. You're welcome. What is Finometrica? Finometrica is a risk profiling tool which is psychometric in nature. The idea of Finometrica is to help provide, help financial providers provide guidance for their clients by creating risk profile for them. So what actually makes Finometrica different from all the other risk profiling systems out there? What makes Finometrica different is, is reliability, validity and accuracy compared to other risk profiling tools on the web today. The idea of Finometrica is that it's, it's reduced to only 25 questions compared to the others which gives us accurate results. Wouldn't that be limiting the actual 
potential responses that they could have? No, not really. Um, because um, we know that every client is going to be individual in their nature, so we are expecting different result in their results. So the, the reduced number of questions allows us to interpret questions in many different ways according to them. So who would typically use Finometrica? Um, banks, financial advisors, mainly in, for the financial services really, and it's for them to advise their clients, whether it be for where future goals, um, money planning, wealth planning, whatever it may be, is to help them assess their clients and where they can go in the future. You mentioned that you use 25 questions. Why not a greater number? Surely a greater number of questions would provide a more accurate response? And normally a greater number would ask a, would require a greater response, but in this case it does not, mainly because 25 questions offers uh, clients short, precise answers for what they need in terms of their goals, future, and it offers accuracy, mainly that's, that's the key importance there, is accuracy of the results, which are then financial advisors are able to utilise and then help them in their future de development. I've done psychometric testing in the past and um, sometimes the responses can be quite ambiguous in nature and it's quite easy to misinterpret a question. Um, how does Finometrica deal with this? It's already interpreted into Finometrica, the, soft, the software itself. So it doesn't matter what the response the client actually gives. Finometrica actually takes this into account and then the financial advisor is able to um, instruct them in, in the best way possible really. How does Finometrica deal with joint profiles? If you had a married couple coming to see you, how would Finometrica assess these? Do they do two profiles? Do they do a joint profile? How does it work? You can't actually do a joint profile using the Finometrica system. Um, the best case would be for the couple to do individual profiles themselves, or which then could be interpreted by the financial advisor in order to accommodate them and their financial goals. So the best thing to do was male and female to do one each, basically. So actually, Finometrica is advising to keep a uh, husband and wife's finances separate or get divorced and deal with their finances on their own? <laughs> you could say that, actually, but um, the idea of the system is, is individually connected. So you cannot assess a couple's risk profile together. It's individual, so everyone has to do their own, which basically is why Finometrica works. Once a client's risk profile has been created, um, the firm then is able to put them into one of the seven categories that you mentioned before. What is the significance of these categories and how can the firm use these categories to help in their asset allocation? The significance of the seven categories is to differentiate the individuals from the low risk to the high risk and it's up to the financial advisor to interpret these. The financial advisor could, could use the high risk individuals and give them higher risky assets to invest in and for the low risk, low risky assets to invest in. So what you're saying, each, each of the seven categories translates to a preset portfolio which can then have um, the optimum combination of low risk, medium risk, high risk investments for the individual? Yes, that's basically correct. Or they can use the linking spreadsheet. So with the linking spreadsheet, do the same thing help with the asset allocation? Yes, that's correct. All right, that's the end of my questions for today there, Imran. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. That was really to be done by Shadow One the Creator. So what we did after that, um, we actually ran the clients that we have through Finometrica. Uh, we give them, went through the risk profile with them separately. Now I just want to show you how Finometrica is laid out. Once we've completed 25 questions, these are the seven groups that it highlights, and you get placed within, depending on the way you've answered the question, as your risk taking ability. From this, we can see uh, Rich's risk taking ability was in the third one, well, the, the third stage. Where Amelia's was in the second state. This shows that Richard is more um, susceptible, available to taking risk than Amelia was. Now, from the Cinematrica results, the optimal portfolio content for Richard involved 10% being in high risk investments, 40% medium risk, 50% in low risk. Um, on Amelia's, on the other hand, was nothing in high risk, 30% um, placed in medium risk investments, and 70% in low risk investments. Obviously, they're a couple. We 
accessing them there are clients as a couple, we needed to look at how we could utilise that. So what we then did was combine their results. We took 50% from each of the individuals, so once we've combined their results, we've got the optimal portfolio for them as a couple was 5% high risk, which was taken from Richard's 10% high risk, and we've got 35% of the investment Investing money being placed in medium risk investments and 60% of it being placed in low risk investments. So we are taking some of this, so there are chances for high returns, but and this was the portfolio that Finometrica would have suggested that we would have gathered from their risk attitude and risk assessment. Now, when assessing creating a portfolio, risk is not the only thing that you need to take into consideration. You also need to look at the levels of return that are required. And what we would then do is we would consult with the clients, because obviously their risk profile suggests this. So we need to explain to them this is what their risk profile suggests. And we need to introduce to them the concept of the efficient frontier. How we would utilise this is show them the level of return that they require based on their initial goals that we discussed, how that would affect the risk and the relation between risk and return. So for example, if the level of risk was to say 10%, we would follow this line here and show the level of return, say it was at 3 or 4%. But if they actually required a greater level of return, they would need to increase their risk. So they would need to maybe go further down the scale. So we would need to explain to them, to meet their goals, they would need to either increase their risk or they're meeting their goals with the level of risk at the moment. Or they need to adjust their goals to meet their level of risk. So we would make them understand how this would work. This curve basically shows the optimum relationship between risk and return for a given rate. So if they needed a risk of 3%, they were happy to take that risk, there would be somewhere here, and the return would be um, given for that percentage. So this is going to be one of the important tools specifically um, to use in conjunction with one of the risk profiling mechanisms that we're going to be using. Now, as a firm, we're looking at into implementing this, and we will, probably, we will be implementing Finometrica. The way we would be utilising it though, is to show that we're adhering to treating customers fairly policy, knowing our customer, and the way we would utilise this is to use it before we have our first meeting with the client. We can send out the client's um, links to Finometrica, they complete their report, and at the very first meeting, we would use this as a conversation start to go through with them the, their results of their risk appetite, talk through them about their goals, decide what we want to achieve, and it'll also help build a bit of rapport and a relationship with these clients. And we've always had a client-centric approach, and this tool will help us maintain that client-centric approach. And we also believe that client-centric approach is the best way in which to increase business, because we end up converting one-time clients into clients for life. And also, when the clients are at the centre of our business, they, it can lead to referrals. So clients that are happy with our service will tell other clients, and we will get new clients ultimately better for us. So to summarise, we would be looking at using the risk profile into a life in America, but we would not use it on its own, we would use it with other aspects like the official frontier and the conversation. Um, that's been our presentation for today. Um, are there any questions?